G'day viewers, my name is Graham Stevenson and I'd like to invite you to come on a journey of creativity and learning and adventure through the series Colour in Your Life. There's an artist in every family throughout the world and lots of times there's an artist deep down inside all of us as well. So grab your kids, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, uncles and mums and dads and come and see how some of the best artists in Australia do what they do. G'day viewers, welcome back to Colour in Your Life. Well today we're going to spend a great day with a lady called Mealy Batchelor. And Mealy is going to take us through some stuff that you haven't seen before on this program. And uh, Colour in Your Life is about creativity, and this is a different type of creativity. She makes owls and sculptures out of all bric-a-brac. But uh, come inside and have a look, it's going to be really cool. <laughs> Welcome back to Colour in Your Life. I'm with Mealy Batchelor today. Now, Mealy actually works with us in Colour in Your Life. She's one of our great team members and uh, really helps out with a lot of our admin and all the things that go on with Colour in Your Life these days. But as you're probably well aware, Mealy's a really, really creative woman as well. And part of the persona that she has as an artist, apart from her paintings, is she was is really, really creative. I mean, she weld. Um, I mean, carpentry. I try to. <laughs> but she's one of the most practical women I think I've ever met in my life. So, but uh, what we're going to do with her today is we're going to put some of the pieces that she um, is started to be quite well known for, and they're a lot of the owl pieces that she does. But she takes bric-a-brac, all kinds of bric-a-brac, and then puts these amazing pieces together. Um, that um, obviously that one's a, the bird of some sort, <laughs> but uh, he uses like bits of colonnade, uh, all sorts of stuff. I mean, when we sort of go travelling on the on the field, out in the field, uh, a lot of the time we'll stop in at these old antique stores where, wherever we are travelling. And Mealy's uh, Menagerie. Mealy's Menagerie, and you go in there and start to buy all sorts of stuff. I mean, it's sort of like she pulls stuff out of boxes everywhere. So, <laughs> but we're going to sit down with uh, Mealy today, and she's going to put uh, all of these together. Really, really interesting stuff. How she does it. And uh, you're going to do an owl for us today, is that right? Yeah, I'm actually going to just show you a couple. I've got three things on the go today. Okay. So I've got a, a lizard and there's a new sculpture that I'm putting together, which might take a while, but I'll just show you the pieces and then I'll do an, uh, an owl. That's really cool. In, in a frame. Really cool. All right, well, let's we'll move this big fellow aside mm -hmm. and then we'll sit down and we'll go through this with Mealy and see what she creates. All right, Mills, well, how do we put all of these things together? You obviously do a little bit of study. I see you've got a huge library as well, apart from all of the stuff you've collected. How do we go about all of this? Um, well, I'm, I usually have a couple of things happening at once because I sort of just do a bit of sifting for a few hours where I'm just sort of, uh, yeah, traipsing through all the little boxes of things and um, seeing if something will catch my eye or... Uh, if I do it the other way is I go through some of the reference books that I've got and just find something that appeals to me okay. or something that I think that might work with some pieces that I have. Yeah. So today this one, it's a, the Red Crane or the Brolga. The Brolga. And, uh, one of our very iconic birds. Yeah. So, uh, and I f actually found all the bits. I've spent a, uh, probably a, nearly a day so, finding so all the So the question is, bits. I mean, where do you... <laughs> Where do you go to get all of this this stuff? I mean, there's, there's mm. just you've got bits and pieces from from everything. I mean, it's it's a very specified little junk room that you've yeah. got. So. I'm very organised. Yeah. It's organised chaos, really. Okay, <laughs> and then I can see that you've got a sketch there. I have. And would, so so really, you've really related the two together. Yeah, um, but the sketch will sort of come after I have found all the bits and. I actually really like that because it's quite um, meditative and cathartic. It's just the way of finding out um, the solution to a problem. Sure. And if it doesn't work, then I 
try something else, you know. But it's still about, I mean, the, I think the beauty about what you're doing is it's really still about creativity. Yeah. Uh, it's not a sort of matter of just putting, say, uh, paint on canvas. Uh, you know, we've got sculptors coming on board, potters these days, people that work with clay. Yeah. And this is just another great example of what you can do. I mean, and we're surrounded by these everyday items that we discard. I mean, we just sort of throw a lot of this away. Mm -hmm. And you've taken it and turned it into an art form on its own. Yeah, I love it. You know, I just wanted to show you the pieces that I've found. This one's from an old lamp base. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just got an amazing shape. Just, it's ready to be a bird, I can looks see. Looks like a bird's neck, doesn't it? <laughs> and it actually looks nice when I grind it because it gets that really nice feathery effect. So I found these, um, I, actually they were given to me um, by a lady who it was through a deceased estate. And um, yeah, I've actually, I shouldn't probably break them, but they're beautiful knives. But it's <laughs> You've destroyed <laughs> well, a family heirloom. <laughs> but otherwise, they just sit in cupboards or but drawers. It's, but it's for, all for art's sake, anyway. For, it is for yeah. art's sake, and and I, I like to add a bit of you know um, beauty, you know these beautiful objects. Welding sometimes is not an option for silver and brass. Um, my teacher, who was teaching me welding, uh, has said that uh, one easy way to find out whether you can meld, weld metals is um, to see if it's magnetic uh -huh. and obviously silver you know there's a lot of metals that aren't um, magnetic and so, can't be welded. Okay so for magnetic because most people would probably wouldn't know that magnetic mm. metals are, are, you can weld them. Yeah so okay. um, obviously that's not metal it's uh, yeah. aluminium uh, yeah I think there you go. There you go. You can weld that. <laughs> these, these are wonderful, wonderful magnets. Yeah. Um, keys are. Okay. You always get a fright when you're I You're going to weld that. that. <laughs> uh, keys and springs, and uh -huh. you know, I can basically just go like this and find. So you find. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sift by magnet. Yeah. So that's a, <clears throat> a a great tip. So that's sort of the basic pieces of of this one. Um, obviously it's going to be a little bit more technical and to put it all together. Well, let's, you've got another one that you, you wanted to actually put together for us today. Yes. Um, so we can have a look at that and then just see sort of the glues that you use, the metal, uh, the metal glues, mm. the wires and, and we'll, yep. we'll hopefully put one of these little things together. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's have a look at that. Great. So I'm going to start um, another one, this one's one of the owls, um, so uh, I just want to show you uh, what I did. You've made a picture box. I have. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was actually buying frames yeah. from um, Ikea and frame shops, um, but I thought I really need to, well I'd like to make them as well. So I found this one um, at a market, yeah. I've painted it obviously. And, and then I knocked up this little box for the back. Yes. Um, which actually just sort of slots in to Oh, right, there. so it just sort of slips in there. Yes. Oh, that's pretty cool, isn't it? And then that gives me the depth. Sure, sure. Mm. Okay, so um, where, where do we go from there? So the background on a lot of the owls that I've been doing um, have been old sheet music. And I was lucky enough to be sent from Melbourne a big box of beautiful old music sheets and thank you very much for that, <laughs> that was lovely. I usually cut them in half, basically just so that... On an angle as well. Yeah, yeah. at the end of the roll I'm going to end up with that music on the edge. Okay. Because if, you know, the old school music here is, yeah. is, is a white edge so it'd end up just being a white roll. Okay. Um, so then I use um, just PVA, PVA, white PVA, yeah. to make sure that it's actually going to come out. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna lick my fingers. Yeah. <laughs> I've just got to get that edge rolling. That's good. Have a look at that. Basically get to the end. Yeah. And then do that. Go to the Spread edge. it in there. Cool. Dries pretty quick. Yeah. Um, I just kind of keep rolling it around till it sticks. 
I actually have a really nice little background. Mm -hmm. um, I, I went through uh. this, these beautiful music pieces and this one, I think it's already named itself. Absolutely. Woodland yeah. Echoes. Yeah. So, and I love that typeface um, because I'm a graphic designer. We used to design typefaces yeah. uh, back in the day. And uh, <laughs> um, I just love that, that whole straight up and down. They're even a little bit woody. Um, so I'd really love to see that background um, come through. What colour are you going to put the wash on top of that there? Well, I do want to uh, make this a bit more of a night scene, obviously, with the owls. Mm -hmm. um, and I have thought about this one and found a few pieces yes. in here, which I'll show you in a minute. But the background, um, I want to have a moon in here. Yes, with lithium batteries. I know. <laughs> and I, it was a real pleasant surprise finding, I was thinking, what well, looks like a moon? And I could have used a watch face, um, but when I pull all the watches apart, I have a whole bunch of these little batteries, and I just thought that looked great. It looked like yeah, it does look like a moon, moon, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, Millie, it looks like you're going to want to put some colour on that now, aren't you? I am. You're going to put some colour in your life with I that, am, aren't you? I am going to put some colour in this life. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, it's such a delicate, delicate piece, and I'm really hoping that, you know, I only get one go at this. Yeah. There's even these lovely little pieces in how they were bound up. Obviously, someone stitched them. With the backing. It may even have been Bill, who gave me the music. Now, this is the fun part. Well, so, actually, it's not the fun part. The metal bits are the fun uh, part. <laughs> what's, what have we got in the spray bottle there? Um, it's just acrylic, watered down. Yeah. So it's a little bit... Um, uh, it just looks like it's a green from what I can see here. It is a green. Oh, look at that. Okay, and there's one more one more element I want to put on this yeah. um, before I put it away and let it dry. And yeah. this actually will take a lot longer to dry. What's that there? Uh, it's uh, the Chroma Josonias yeah. Opal Dust. What, what is it? What's it got in it? It's um, fluorescent flex. Yeah. And it will dry clear, but it will also have that fluorescent. Oh, so it leaves all the flex in there? Yeah. Just squeeze it out. Go have a look at it. It just it does. It literally looks like an yeah. opal, doesn't it? So I actually need to put that out in the sun to dry. So, but what you've got, you've got a couple of. I saw with that other one. Now, now you've got a gold. This is the gold. So dust. that's just full of gold flecks, is it? Yeah. And what about you've got? You said the, with those other. Oh, there you go. Oh, these are amazing. They're all iridescent paints. So Kramer makes these as well. That's yeah. that's pretty incredible. So I thought I might actually just show you a couple of the owls mm -hmm. that I'd found to put together on this piece. You know, initially sort of looking at that, nobody would see an owl. No. But obviously you've been able to see, <laughs> see these little characters popping out here and there. Obviously that's my little moon. Yes. And I did have, these are my watches I've been pulling apart. You've got watches in there everywhere. Yeah, lots of bits and pieces. Yeah. So basically, I did find a picture that worked with this. So I want three owls sitting here, mum -hmm. and babies. Yeah. And I found some eyes for mum, which are little bobbins. Oh, really? Yeah. It's the other the sewing machines, goodness. Yeah. And so, some more pieces. These are the real treasury bits. We have old pennies and the best parts of the watches, which is the watch face. Oh, yeah. Some parts off earrings. And oh, great, so for the feet. Great little feet. Oh, then look at that. Isn't that great? <laughs> yeah. It's really just a matter of playing around with things until they get, until they get right. So. Here it is, it's almost dry, even this is kind of really glowing now that it's drying. Now the process of putting the little forest on. Yeah. So I've, I've got most of my trees in there. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to add a little thing show you. Oh look at that. And just just a little bit of different interest in there. Yeah. My mum used to make little pastry trees on our 
on our pies that she used to make us for, for dinner. Oh, okay. Cut them out of pastry. <laughs> they were the best part of the pie. How did you get the inspiration to do all of this? Well, kind of like the owls started happening when I was in here and I was painting a tawny frogmouth painting. And it's in my mother's, uh, one of my mother's old frames. And my mum and dad have passed away uh, more than five years ago now, um, at different times. But um, it fell, I had painted that and it was on the wall in the gallery here. And uh, I was kind of wandering around the studio thinking, what am I going to paint next? What am I going to do next? And it fell off the wall. And I thought, okay, mum. That's a sign. <laughs> okay. I'll do some owls. <laughs> okay. And I've made hundreds of them. But I know that I know that they are so unbelievably popular and the mm. expos that we've done and the exhibitions that you've done that I've been to, I mean, they literally just fly off the wall, they I suppose do. you can say. <laughs> which is great. Um, you know, they I think they're a little bit mystical and um, three dimensional and three dimensional. Yeah, there's a whole whole bunch of things going on. Yeah, and they're cute. Owls yeah. love everyone loves an owl. Um, you know, they're wise, they're mystical, they're, they're cute. Where do, we, where do we go from here then? Back to the woodland. Yeah. Um, so from now, we start using the Tarzan script. Yeah, from here, I've got enough woodland in the back there to yeah. support the, the birds. So I think half the fun of doing this, which is which I think would be an excursion and a day out on its own, would be going to these old, tucked away, out of the way places mm. and then rummaging around in old boxes and I love it. drawers and cupboards and, yeah. and, I, and, I've, and I hear that people sort of tend to, a little bit like the St Vincent de Paul, they make drops at your door but it's generally <laughs> old bits and pieces of something. Yeah. <laughs> the, if the audience could see inside your house or even outside your house, yeah. and you have a sculpture of a boat that you've made down there that's a garden. Yeah. That looks like Noah's Ark for plants. <laughs> That's the best way to it's look at it. It's an installation. It's but an it, installation. It, uh, it turned into a herb garden. I have more sculptures in the yard, knives and forks, wind chimes, and there's an owl sitting on my outhouse roof, um, which is made out of an old um, oven door. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, it's kind of like, you know, that free art. People can look at it as they walk by and... Yeah. and uh, yeah, hopefully commission me to do a garden sculpture. There you go. Because, you know, once I start doing more welding, I'll be doing bigger things. Yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, you encompass just about everything that uh, anybody would want to <laughs> be a part of as far as the creative industries are concerned. Um, so is this whole, this particular one, is this whole thing put together with Tarzan's group or, um, or only the metal? The metal bits, group? metal to metal. Uh -huh. um, I use uh, a different glue, a little bit more expensive. Yeah. Um, you have to mix them together and they go off really quickly. So, so you've got to sort of put them all together and then, yeah. and then slip them in. Well, I was just going to paint a little bit of that paint on. Yeah. What a nice long cloud there. So where's my pencil? Land of the long white cloud. So I'll just... So you just round it with the pencil? Yep. Just to get your shape? Silver lined cloud. A silver lined cloud. <laughs> so this is... No. Iridescent blue. Yeah. And it dries iridescent blue and it's white. Yeah. Well, that is fascinating. Well, the, the white disappears. And the iridescent blue comes through. Yeah. Well, isn't chroma too smart? They've it's done it again. Fabulous stuff. Yeah. And it just adds an extra extra colour in the page as well. There it? you go, sort of like little, little clouds. Hmm. 
So Mills, you also, because you're so dedicated to your art practice, you actually have a bed and breakfast that people can come to as well. Yeah. So that they come in, actually use the studio, uh, be part of what you're doing and stay at the house as well. That's, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. And if, if people want to track you down, uh, what's the best website for them to get a hold of you with? Um, on airbnb.com.au and I've just put up a profile page, Millie Art House. And I have a room in the house so people can come and stay. So what's your actual website for your artwork as well? My website is um, www.mealyart.com. Mealyart.com, okay, mm -hmm. that's sensational. So if anybody wants to see Meals' work yep. um, and purchase some of these amazing pieces, they really are just quaint, whimsical and beautiful all in the one, uh, you can uh, pop in and see Millie there. Yep. Or if you want, you can uh, come into uh, Colour in Your Life .com.au and you can actually see uh, Mealy's work in the shop in there as well. Well, it's been another very, very creative day. Um, thank you so much, Mills, for having us in your studio again. Thank you, it's thank you. Absolutely sensational. Um, obviously, you've seen all of these, uh, these great little pieces that Mealy puts together. And as you can obviously see, creativity is not just about uh, drawing or, or painting. There are so many different facets to the right brain and this is just just one of those parts as well. Uh, once again, always want to thank our sponsors, uh, Chroma, Canson, Virgin, uh, Fredericks Accounting. Uh, Mr. Cor Fredericks is on board very heavily with us these days, wanting us to move right around the country uh, doing what we're doing. Uh, Bob and Annette Stainlay, always been with us right from the very beginning. Great people. Uh, also Australian Art Review, of course, and Australian Photo Review. And yes, our DVDs. Um, we're going to be putting out one of these per month. So if you uh, want to give us a call or write into the website, uh, we'll be able to give you the details for that as well. But uh, they are really going out the door, which is just great. We've got some other really exciting news coming up in hopefully the next couple of months. Uh, the show is going overseas. We're in New Zealand now. Uh, hopefully going to, well, pretty definitely going to uh, London and the UK in November and then the USA and China next year. So our little show is literally going around the planet, which we really think is just marvellous. and. Thank you for, to everybody for the wonderful compliments you give us. But once again, we've got to go. But remember, before we go, make, make sure you put, put some, some colour in, in your, your life. life. <laughs> we will see you next time, guys. <laughs> Bye now. Some of the great artists from Colour in Your Life are going to be at Sea Gallery, November the 1st, James Street, Fortitude Valley in Brisbane for an exhibition. Come along and see these amazing artists in the one place. Sea Gallery, 1st of November, Brisbane. See you there, guys.